Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Blog tutorial. Today we're gonna to look at one of the songs that I've been working on recently and show you some of the tips and tricks that I've been using uh, to create a song like this. So in this track, I'm using a couple instances of Dimitri Sech's Thorn synthesizer. Really awesome synth, I love it. Fantastic for like kind of really dirty, edgy sort of stuff. And I love the arpeggiator and, and all the modulation options. One of the instances in here I've actually frozen so that it's a, a WAV file and it's more consistent because uh, I was finding there's just a little too much randomness. Um, playing back the song it was never the same way. Uh, so I just wanted to be a little bit more consistent with that. I'm also using the Prism Drums from AVA Music Group. Did a review of those like a year ago or so, and um, adding in also a uh, tom sample in there. So all the drums are just on a single MIDI track. I'm also using a Tal Uno LX, and then I'm using a bunch of loops that came through Loop Cloud. Uh, so there's sort of like a, a stabby synth pad thing, and there's a whole bunch of percussion loops, uh, swells, and things like that. Uh, most of my samples that I'm using here came through Loop Cloud. So uh, let's give this a listen. So there we go. That's the song that I've made. Kind of like a cyberpunk vibe. I don't really know what you call it. I don't know what genre, but I'm going to call it cyberpunk, I guess. A lot of it is that distorted synth, uh, that thorn synth. And I'm automating things like the filter and the saturation amount. I think I had the arpeggiator on the random mode. And, and I'm using the LFOs 
to modulate some various things, as well as doing quite a lot of automation. Uh, the automation is hidden right now because it's frozen, but, but yeah, lots of that in this section here. I'm using a second instance of Thorn. And on this track, I've got, let's see, a little bit of the glide option here. And um, I'm actually not using any modulation, a little bit of effects, just this distortion lo-fi chorus in here. And for EQ, just cutting out a little bit of lows. So let's look at some of the tricks that I use to kind of keep things interesting. I would say this is far from finished, but I think there's a lot of good ideas here. And at this point, I just kind of want to make a video, I guess. So let's look at this. Uh, one of the things that I found really helped um, with this synth here was to add in some pan automation. So I'm going to bypass this. We'll hear it normally. Okay, and so I've put in a pan envelope with the sign shape in the automation item. And so it's four cycles starting the phase at 25 so that it is not starting right at the, starting at the center, it's starting on the side. So 25% uh, puts that on the right. You could put in 75 if you want to start it on the left. And it's a pretty subtle effect, but I think it adds a lot of movement. It keeps things interesting. And at different points, um, you know, when the drums aren't playing or they, the other synth plays or there's different kind of frequency buildup differences, uh, that panning helps just, just break things up a little bit. This shaker track is a loop. And I'll play this without effects. And this shaker is almost like a, a matchbox or something like that, kind of, or like a, a box of nerds candy. All I'm doing on here is biome, applying a sample and hold kind of randomization to the low frequency. And again, this is just kind of a pretty subtle thing. It, it just adds some random elements to it. It kind of add some accents to some of those notes, um, but not really changing the volume of it, just changing the frequency. Yeah, I think on here, I've only increased the mid-range by automating the cutoff using the sample and hold uh, modulator. I've kind of randomized things and had different frequencies jump out as accents rather than using volume automation and, you know, or things like that. Let's look at this cowbell track next. And we're going to start it off with the effects bypassed. And the effects on now. I think that's a pretty cool effect. I'm using the transient controller JS effect to basically kill all the transient. So it's it's almost more of a synthy kind of pad sound. Tal chorus LX, awesome chorus plugin, uh, just adds a ton of width to this. And Echo Boy, so it's a sixteenth note echo, but I'm but I'm using an automation item here with a uh, a saw shape um, to add in a lot of movement to this. And it doesn't perfectly line up, and I kind of like that. I've got this printed clap track here, and here's how it sounds. I'm using this as a swell. So what I did here, pretty sure, uh, what I did here was take this track, which is the original clap, 
This is going through Spring Reverb and Compressor. And um, I applied OTT to this, which is a very strong multiband compressor. I just added probably like five or 10 of these. Right? So I printed that to a track and then reversed it to end up with a swell from like this heavily reverbed sort of thing. Yeah, and, and no effects on this post that. I also did something similar with one of the synths to get this sound. So on this track, I just have some EQ, but this is actually the, uh, the synth here. Another one of those thorns. So it's just a high note from that, but I printed it after running it through several OTTs. And let's just copy this over here and stretch this out to the original sample. OTT brings out some crazy stuff and I love it. I'll probably do a video on some OTT tricks uh, in the near future. So anyways, that when layered in with the other synths in this section of the song, just adds this really interesting kind of edgy swell. I really like it. Now, the last thing I want to show you is a really cool plugin. It's a free plugin um, called Cassette Transport. It's from Waze Factory. It's basically a cassette tape transport. So play and stop, and it does that cool um, tape stop effect. So I'm using that at the end of the song. And for this, you need to automate the play and stop buttons. So I am just have these square envelope points right here at the end. And it takes um, it takes a quarter note to fully stop. So let's play that. This plugin also gives you the option of turning up the switch volume and tape transport noise. Uh, so I'll just play that. So you hear the the sound of the switches. I just turned that off because I want that tape stop effect. There's many other ways to get a tape stop effect, but you know, this is a new free plugin. Wanted to try it out, wanted to show it a little bit on the channel. I think it's a pretty effective end to this track. So now we're looking at the full mixer. There's not a whole lot going on. There's only 19 tracks in this project. This, uh, this crash symbol is maybe one last thing we'll look at. It's got some EQ, delay, phaser, and, re and another EQ on it. Let's check this out, bypassed. And on. And I kind of love that effect. You know, it makes it sound farther away. It makes it sound lo-fi. Um, here's the EQ. This is a stereo delay, so I'm delaying it two eighth notes, or quarter note on the left side, and a quarter note plus 13 milliseconds on the right side. Quite a lot of feedback, so about minus six of feedback. Filtering, uh, only left side. I think that was maybe a, mis a mistake, but uh, that kind of helps with that uh, stereo width. The phaser from air, and then another EQ, which is just rolling off the very top edge. also automated. So that's where I'm gonna end this one. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you found something interesting in this demonstration. Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.